Silky Beat. Hi guys, we're at BMW Tamworth and we're going to take our first look at the F90 M5. I'm old school, I'm from the manor, I'd up here every rave. As you can see, it looks a little bit bigger than the previous F10 generation. It's got some new styling cues, so they've got the iconic LED headlights at the front. Uh, the front bumper shape is actually quite a bit more angular than the F10. Um, if we come across to the side, you can see it's got a new design of the 20 inch wheel. Uh, the side grills are different as well, so it's more in line with the newer BMWs with having the slant. So if we go to the back of the car, you can see there's a bit more styling on the rear diffuser than on the current F10. It looks a bit more aggressive, so it almost looks aftermarket from, from the factory. The other big thing about the M5 is, which the other one was missing, is the carbon roof. So it has the double bubble carbon roof. Uh, in line with the other M cars. Now the M6, old M6 Grand Coupe had it and the M6 had it, but the M5 didn't, so that's a new addition. Uh, on this car as well, the interior is actually really nice. Um, it comes very well spec, so although the car is 89,000 pounds, really specced up, it actually comes with probably the equivalent of 10,000 pound worth of uh, extras that the old one didn't. So you've got full leather, you've got uh, any LCD dash, um, you've got an uprated sound system as standard. Um, obviously the main thing with this M5 as well is the engines more or less the same as the previous generation but running a little bit more power uh, around 600 and also this one has switchable four-wheel drive. Now that was a big complaint with the F10 because people would say that it couldn't put its power down which is a genuine concern but now you have the option of four-wheel drive and then if you want rear-wheel drive with a flick of a switch you can go to that. So the engine is the same, it's a 4.4 V8 twin turbo with some additions, they've reworked the turbochargers, the air inlets uh, to get that extra power. But it'll be really interesting to see once we actually get hold of one of these um, to put it on the dyno to see how much power it's putting out because the old one was making much more than the 560 horsepower that BMW quoted. Sort of interesting thing on this car is that the M performance exhaust when you buy the car is only 1100 pounds. Now I can't see many people not ticking that box because it's going to save a hell of a lot of money over buying an aftermarket one and if you check out the videos it actually sounds really good so i think that's going to be kind of a no-brainer option for most people when they're buying this car as you probably know from ricky's channel we've got an f10 m5 currently and we are looking to place an order for an f90 today which will hopefully be delivered in march so we look forward to developing um same sort of range of parts that we have done on the f10 so we're looking to do uh, aero this time as well. So we'll have some uh, carbon fiber aero parts, obviously the Evo True intakes, um, 660 wheels, and get maybe get a bit more power out of the car as well. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's uh, exciting to get hold of a car which now has uh, switchable four wheel drive. So at least um, we can put the power down off the line and um, sort of keep up with those pesky supercars up to 60 as well, as well as reeling them in at the top end. Inside the car, the level um, of quality of interior is definitely raised. Um, you've got full leather as standard, the quality of the leather looks very good. Um, obviously the other important thing about this car is the gearbox. It's no longer dual clutch, it's actually an 8 speed automatic. And that was uh, to do with the fact that the car is now four wheel drive uh, because you can't get the DCT to work that well with the four wheel drive so they went for the 8 speed. Uh, which will be interesting to see how that works. I mean the DCT gearbox is very quick but the modern day autos are actually very very fast as well now and it's quite hard to differentiate between the two. 
Um, the other things I noticed is, so it's got red start button, it's got the red M modes, which I think adds a nice little bit of color to the dash. Um, it's got the ambient mood lighting as well, which is very cool. This particular car has the upgraded um, Bells and Wilkins um, stereo. Now I've not had a chance to hear it, but um, I'm pretty sure it'll be a little bit better than the standard one. Also got um, Alcantara headlining. Uh, seats initially feel very supportive. Um, it's got a lot of storage as you'd expect from a big car. Um, also has wireless charging. Uh, the, the sat nav sort of the iDrive system seems very familiar. If you're familiar with BMWs, it's very fast and it looks like it's pretty easy to use. Um, the dash itself is a big improvement with the sort of LCD display it has. Um, haven't had a chance to go through the different modes on it yet because we don't have the key for the car at the moment. Um, but yeah, overall the interior is pretty stunning to be honest with you. I'm very impressed with the quality uh, level. It's actually, the F10 was much better than the E60 and now the F90 quality of the interior is even higher than the F10. So yeah, looking forward to getting one. I guess there's adequate leg room. That's with my driving position in there. Obviously children not gonna have any issues. Plenty of headroom. Little touches like the extra stitching work really well. This car also has the optional M stripes in the seat belts. Uh, this is a pretty well spec car, so it's also got the M, M carbon ceramic brakes, uh, which are a seven and a half grand option. And it's got uh, the TV monitors at the back. Uh, so if you want kids, you can keep them entertained and they can't keep saying to you, are we there yet? Uh, it's also got dual con AC control. So you've got the individual AC controls in the back here. Um, so yeah, generally speaking, even in the back, it's it's nice. It's a very, very high quality and it seems like a comfortable sort of airy place to be. Obviously, because of the carbon roof, you've lost uh, the option of the sunroof. I'm not 100% sure if you can spec a sunroof. If you can, you will lose the carbon roof. So I'm not sure how many people will do that. There it is, the 4.4 V8 twin turbo with the two turbos in the middle of the V. This one also has the M Performance um, optional carbon engine cover with the M stripes in it. But it pretty much looks identical to the, the last engine. The airboxes look slightly different. Doesn't look like there's a MAF sensor anymore. Charge coolers are in the same place with some extra piping. Uh, turbo inlets are also a lot smoother than on the F10. Um, that's going to help with flow, so that's probably partly where they're getting some of the extra power from. Let's have a look in the boot. The F10 boot was um, actually very big and yeah, this is not much different, it's huge. It's slightly, seems like it's slightly narrower but it's plenty big enough for um, carting your family stuff around and if you're going away for a long weekend to get a couple of suitcases in there. So yeah, it's uh, impressive. I won't do the dead body test and put Ricky in there. <laughs> <laughs>